In this presentation, we will take a look at the data we will be using for the data input into our partnership tax return problem. Here we are in our form 1065, the place that we're going to be entering this data into. Before we start entering the data, however, the first step is to be gathering the data. So this is typically going to be information we're going to be needing from the client or from ourselves before we can put that information into the system. Now we're talking about a partnership return. Therefore, the primary thing that we're going to need are going to be the financial statements. So we're going to need some form of balance sheet and income statement. This differs a little bit from a sole proprietorship where you may be able to just be entering the income statement. But for the most part with the partnership, you'll have the full system, we'll have the balance sheet and the profit and loss or income statement. And this is actually helpful or useful to give us a kind of a check as we enter this stuff into the system. So when we put this into the tax return, we'll have a similar kind of balancing process to help us verify that everything is in there correctly as we do with financial accounting. If you're talking about a new client that you're taking on or you're doing a tax return for a partnership and it's the first time you're doing it, the tax return for the partnership and they had been a partnership in prior years, then you're probably going to want, you're going to need that prior year information. And it would be best if you can actually put that into the tax software for the prior year. In other words, if you're talking about 2019 return, you're going to use new software to put it into the 2019 return. It might be best to take the return from last year, which was what you're going to want and put that into 2018 and then roll it forward to 2019. What that will do for you is it allow you to verify that everything is correct as you put it into the 2018. And when you roll it forward, things like the retained earnings and any kind of carryover information, beginning balances and things like uh, the basis or the capital accounts for the partners will also roll over. So it's a, it's a nice process to be able to do that. If you can't do that, then we'll enter the beginning balances and ending balances for those beginning balances such as the balance sheet information. So what are you going to need to start to start the process? You're going to need the financial statements. You want the tax return if you're if you're not doing it last year, if you didn't do it last year, you want the tax return so you can enter that into the beginning format. Now, if you had done the tax return last year in the same software such as Lacert, which is what we'll be using here, it will then roll forward for you and you'll have that that set up those beginning numbers will roll forward that process will be nice and easy and the setup process in terms of the company or the partnership information will hopefully be the same unless and you only have to deal with any kind of changes in terms of the partnership uh, general partnership information so then if we scroll down we're going to have some added information that we will need we've got the balance sheet and then the income statement and then we have some added information where we are going to need of course the partners that will be involved. We're going to have two partners in our partnership problem. And then we're going to have some added information that we'll get to uh, in the future. Our goal then is going to be to take this financial statement information and then put it in such a way that it's going to be easy to input into the tax software. We will do that with a worksheet. So on the right hand side, we will have our worksheet here. We're going to take our financial information. We're going to be inputting that into our worksheet to make it a bit easier for us to put that data input into the partnership tax return. I do recommend doing this uh, for just about any partnership return because it gets a little bit more complicated. You can just take the financial statements and just and just take those and just go right into the tax return and enter those into the tax return. However, when we consider the tax return, and here's an, an example of a completed uh, tax return. If we go down to the last page, page five of the uh, 1065, we're gonna have things such as the M1 adjustments and other types of adjustments that will be involved. So it's not as straightforward as simply entering the balance sheet and then the income statement. We're gonna have some adjustments within it. We would like to put th those adjustments into our worksheet so we can better understand them. None of these adjustments are too difficult in and of themselves with one adjustment, but when you start to compound them and pile all these adjustments on top of themselves, then it does get quite confusing and we, we need some systematic way to track that. So even a fairly simple partnership problem, you're probably going to want some type of worksheet so you can better understand how the data input, input process will work. It will be similar to doing basically financial statements from say a trial balance where if something is out of balance, then you don't know where to go. You have to start all over basically again if you don't have some type of system to put this in process. A long tax return can take you all day. So what you don't want to do is take basically all day putting in a tax return that's a fairly complex tax return and then get to a point where you don't know what happened. You can't reconcile it just like with a balance sheet 
and then you have to start the whole thing over. What you want to do is put in a system so that you know what you're doing in a step-by-step -step process, and therefore when you run into a mistake, you can fall back to the prior step rather than step one that started in the morning and now it's like eight at night, right? So we want to put together a process that we can enter this information into the system as efficiently as possible and tie everything out correctly. So we'll put this worksheet together in a systematic step-by-step -step way, journal entry by journal entry, as we put this information into the tax return. And we're going to take this data, the starting point will be that we'll take this data over here, the financial statements, and we'll convert them back into basically a trial balance format. So, and usually if you're, if you're used to financial accounting, you've done it the other way around. You've taken the, the data input information, the trial balance and created the financial statements. Now we're going to do it the other way. We're going to take the financial statements, put them back into a trial balance. Now, if you have accounting software, like let's say the client gave you something like QuickBooks or something, you can actually generate a trial balance and, and then you can start with basically the trial balance there. However, it could be possible that they just give you the financial statements. And often when you look at book problems, that's what they'll do. They'll give you a financial statement. And if you really want to work through it in detail and fully understand it, then you want to break that, that back down into a trial balance and put together a worksheet that'll look something like this. Now, as we put this worksheet together, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the formatting. We're going to give you that formatting already. If you want to take a look at a course that has just putting together this worksheet together, we do have a course that goes over basically the Excel formatting and setting up uh, a worksheet such as this. So you can take a look at that. Also note that when you go to different types of tax firms or CPA firms, they're going to have different systems. They might use some other kind of software to, to enter this information into a worksheet format before entering it into uh the tax return and you want to you want to get used to any system that is there and you in, but you also have to branch out to the degree that you need to understand it a lot of systems will, will take a lot of shortcuts and it might be difficult if you're trying to learn the system if you don't see the shortcuts you might have to do the whole thing it's easier to list it all out so you understand fully what is going on i think excel is actually the most transparent type of software out there because you can actually see all the links for it so I think it's one of the best, it is the best tool, I think, or some type of spreadsheet like a Google Sheets or something uh, to put this information in before you put it into the tax return. The end result will look something like this. Can look overwhelming when we first take a look at it, but it's not too bad once we take it in a step-by-step -step process. We're going to start with the client information or the information from, say, our accounting system. I'm going to call that the unadjusted trial balance. Now, for tax purposes, hopefully we're thinking that you could have different levels of clients or different levels of information that you're getting if it's your own tax return. When you take it from the tax software, it may be completely done and that's going to be the, the books, financial statements for the books or the financial statements given to you are already the adjusted financial statements and you don't need to do any book adjustments for them in that case and therefore just need to do the tax adjustments for them. However, it's quite possible that if you're talking, if you're especially if you're dealing with smaller clients, that you're you're going to get the uh, the books and you might do some adjustments for them just to get their their book financial statements correct. So then you would have an adjusting worksheet similar to what you would see in just financial accounting, where you'd have the unadjusted trial balance, any adjustments you need just to make the book financial statements correct. For example, uh, many small businesses will depend on the tax preparation to do things like uh, record depreciation expense because the tax software has a nice system to record it and calculate it and therefore we might we might uh, you might have something with a, a client or, or a cpa firm or an accounting firm might have a deal with a client that basically says hey you you do this amount of information you don't need to worry about the depreciation we'll we'll calculate the depreciation and make that adjustment basically at the end of the year so you could have some kind of situation such as that, in which case you would want the unadjusted trial balance, then the adjustments, and then the adjusted trial balance that, that you would make. So these are for normal bookkeeping adjustments. Then we're going to have adjustments that will be tax-related adjustments. And these are going to be where we're going to track the things and be able to track into something, uh, the different numbers that will be represented on the tax return. So these are going to be differences from the book to the tax return. And if we scroll down uh, to the bottom, then we're going to have our income down here. Here's going to be our income. Now we have our income on a book basis. And we're going to have our income basically on a tax basis. Now, if we go to the actual tax return, you'll note that the first page of the tax return is in essence an income statement because it's basically we're reporting income that's going to flow through from the partnership to the 1040. So the individual partners will be paying on their so we need the income on it. 
we have the bottom line income here, the, the 287,800. That's going to be basically the tax income, not the book income. So we want to have a system, a worksheet that can basically tie into these two numbers or, or else it's going to get really kind of, it's going to get really confusing really fast. And then we're going to say that uh, page three is going to have an adjustment. Let's go to page four is going to have the schedule K, which includes uh, the ordinary business income, which was on page one, line 22, the 287, eight, and also has the net earnings from self-employment. And then if we go to page five, we're going to then have the M1s, the M1s showing the book value of the 355, 278. So there's going to be the 355, 278. And that ties into the, uh, or reconciles out to the 286, 400, 286, 400 here. So basically we want to be able to tie these different, these different items out and, and be able to see what the actual tax return is doing. So what we will do then is we'll put in a systematic process. First, entering the data uh, into the tax system on a book basis. We'll put it into the tax system on a book basis, tie out the first page to this number, the book basis number, and then we'll go in and say all the adjustments that we're gonna have to make in order to basically adjust for the difference between the book value and the tax value. Then we'll do that in a systematic way, a one journal entry at a time type of way. We'll look at each M1 or Schedule K adjustment, one at a time and we'll consider it in the format of a journal entry on the tax return what does actually happen here we start with something that's in balance then we're going to do something think of it as kind of like a journal entry that's going to affect two places which will keep us in balance somehow right and then we'll reflect that in a more transparent way one step at a time as we go into the worksheet and be able to reflect that same thing in a more transparent excel worksheet at the same time if you approach the tax return in this way then you're going to get to something that's in balance and every adjustment that you make from that point forward will be something that should keep you in balance and if something throws you out you know it's that one adjustment that you have been working on that's going to be the system we'll put together step by step